Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to be on time, hallelujah, because our God is always on time for us. Woo, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Even as we prepare before our pastor comes and opens up the service, that song I, I started off in the record, but I just, it's, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, hallelujah, take joy, my King, in what you Sweet sound in your ear. Let's do it one more time. I love you, Lord, and I lift my Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just thank God for your prayer. I thank God for just meeting us this morning in prayer. And I just knew a worship song was in my heart. But at this time, it will be in the hands of our pastor. He said he wants to open up this morning. So we just honor him at this time. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. How many are excited to be in the house of God this morning? Come on, how many are excited to be in the house of God on this morning? I don't know about you, praise the name of the Lord, but it's this new chapter. I am so excited for this new chapter in Holy Remnant Ministries. I am so excited about this new chapter in Holy Remnant Ministry. This is what I am thankful. Stuff was breaking, stuff's not working, but God has made room for us, and we shall rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. 
We shall rejoice and be glad. We shall rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We shall rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We shall rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us thank you. Do you mind if we just Hallelujah. Right now, praise the name of the Lord. But as this is going around the world, I 
want you all to know, praise the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, because God, the holy angel, praise the name of the Lord. This is not my ministry. I'm just responsible for it. We're going to go as far as we take it with the help of the Lord. And I believe, praise the name of the Lord, the gifts that are flowing in this church, if we allow the Holy Ghost to use us, there will not be a building large enough to hold up. Not only are we welcome in the spirit of God in this place, but he is already here. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. But I want you all to be comfortable on today. We're not changing anything about the order of our service. We're going to testify and the God prays something on your heart to say, say it. Well, the green is going to come in here. She's going to say what she has to say. And then the presence of God is going to continue to be in this place through the spoken word. And we're going to get out of here on this great Father's Day. Yes. Okay, I'm 
We just thank God for his grace and his mercy. Is there any more testimonies? You know I believe in hitting it quick because God has a word for his people today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to move on us. He wants to move through us. I know we're trying to get adjusted, but I do know that God is in the place that he has. Hallelujah. He has a miracle for somebody today. Even if you're on live, God has a miracle for you today. You don't need to see my face. You just need to hear what I'm saying to you right now. God has a miracle for you today. Hallelujah. Every addiction, every affliction, God has an answer for you today. Hallelujah. You do not have to stay the same. Hallelujah. I realize that you have tried many things and you have not found solace. But today, there is a word for you. So stay on that computer. It does not matter. Hallelujah. Don't close your eyes. Don't even look at the screen. Listen what God is saying to the people. Amen. At this time, it will be a words of wisdom from our church mother, Evangelist Lois Green. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Woo, that for my beloved friends and sisters. All the little children, <laughs> according to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast. Yeah. Come on. I'm movable. Come on. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, not your flesh. The work of the Lord, not how you feel. The work of the Lord, not who told you you should, but the work of the Lord. For you know as much that your labor, do you really think that it would be in vain? So we admonish you, we encourage you, we beseech you. How about this? I flat out beg you.
no matter whether the ship went upside down or it was sailing in smooth waters, he stayed at the helm of the ship. And we are so grateful for him on today. And I'm just encouraged to see all of you here today. I'm encouraged and my heart is rejoicing. This is just another level, HR. So be steadfast. Don't move. Stay in place so God can use you. There is a higher calling. Reach to it. Amen. And be abounding. Move this thing. Whatever God gave you, move it. And, and I, I'm praying today, I know that we need the healing in the room, yeah. encouragement in the room, yeah. salvation in the room, yeah. new levels in the room. Yeah. And I'm here to get mine, and I will help you get yours. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My strength in the Lord. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Thank God for our church mother. We thank God for his hallelujah. It's important that we have seasoned saints um, in the ministry. It's so very important. I just thank God for all that have come forth the testimony service. I thank God for, for praise and worship and for innocence and prayer early this morning. We just thank God for all um, that are here for this new chapter. Um, at this time, as usual, hallelujah. We desire to have our, our Ministry of Information to come forth at this time uh, to inform us of the upcoming events for um, the Holy Radiant Ministries Church of God in Christ. Amen. 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 jurisdictional aim will be held on July 27th through the 29th. Okay. Um, our pastor is the main president. Okay. So more to come as the date gets closer. All right. So Shakar, back by popular demand. We all love Shakar. August the 1st through the 14th. At 4.30 a.m., please set your alarm so you can get up with our pastor so we can go in front of the Lord in the morning. <laughs> we'll get it together, I promise you guys. All right. 
So we are at the Holy Convocation for South Dakota. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. This year, this year, um, it is called Redeeming the Time. And the scripture base is Joel 2, 25 through 26. And our first lady, Supervisor Felicia Carr, will be honored this year at her inaugural banquet this year. And it is on Saturday. And the guest speaker is Mother Jacqueline Holmes. And she will be the guest speaker on Saturday. Please check your emails for the itinerary for South Dakota. We have some deadlines for South Dakota. And if you're going, please let me know by June the 15th, if you're going to South Dakota, so I can give First Lady Tawanda Carr a head count so she can get the um, hotel room sectioned off for us at, um, when we go out here. Also, I'm going to just read it really quick. Not all of it, but just the highlights. If you would like a t-shirt, there's a deadline for that as well. And the t-shirts are $25 for adults and 18 for children. And also the banquet, the dinner for the banquet is only $15 for us. South Dakota has did fundraising, and we only have to pay $15 for that banquet. And please check your email for any further announcements for South Dakota. And I will, me and Victoria have another meeting probably at the end of this month, and we will come back with you with more updates. I also sent out an email about a special presentation that will be happening in South Dakota. And I need you all to get back to me on that deadline for the special presentation for that. Okay. Looks like there are broadcast times. We have to make changes because now we're in the building. So, again, we will update it. We thank God. Um, we got here early this morning and we were setting up. And we just bless God. But right now, we do know service will start at 11 a.m. Okay. Sunday school hour may change in the future, but we will definitely keep you posted. Wednesday night Bible study, we will continue studying the book, The Power of God's Name by Tony Evans. Everybody's been enjoying the book and the study with our pastor and our first lady. Amen. Amen. All right, this is testimony service. This may change as well. So just keep just keep encouraged, you know, so we know where the order of the service is going to go. Lifeline. The yeah. lifeline, yeah. the prayer, the lifeline led by our own evangelist, Wendy Treadwell, on Saturdays at 9 a.m. and by the mothers on, at, on Wednesday at 12 p.m. If you have missed it, you have missed it. God moves on Zoom on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So please invite a friend and come on in. And the life from. We had our meeting, and I just want to say thank you all for coming out and supporting when we had the Young Remy's and we went out. I thank you guys again for coming, and we're starting our Bible study every second Saturday at 11 a.m., and I'm so glad what God is doing for the life of the Young Remy's. At this time, we would like to thank all the visitors if we have any visitors. I hope it's a visitor today. It's our first time in the building. <laughs> Some of y'all use the Cash App and, uh, you know, the Zelle, whatever you use, you can feel free to do that right now. And if you have cash to give today, um, it can be given to our administrator, Evangelist Green. She will receive all cash um, contributions. We would especially like to thank those um, who have been following us in our virtual services. Your contributions have been greatly appreciated. We even thank you for the special gifts that you use turned in this week and we just thank you because you can well be uh, of this of this ministry moving forward and so we thank you for your contributions um to the hr ministry um we endeavor to always be um a 
free in regards to how the money is received and how it is utilized. And so be encouraged. You are sowing into good ground. But at this time, um, at this time, um, it is time for the word of God. Amen. Amen. We are, amen. We are a church about the word. Um, I know we, we've done a lot of things and yeah, we do do a lot of singing. And even right now, if I would have seen um, a certain individual before, earlier before service, I would have had her come and share a, 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 a solo with us. But at this time, hallelujah, because I know our with the word, amen. Amen. I believe it's a great word for us today on our first day of the new. Amen. Amen. And at this time, our own pastor, Hassa Leroy T. Carr Jr. Amen. amen. Yeah. 
watch me, watch me, watch me. So you want nothing for the same. That's why Jesus keeps saying, don't let anything change regardless of the season. I know in the Old Testament, they were saying, how could we take nice songs from strange lands, pray the name of the Lord, but branches that shouldn't dictate how you sing and what you sing to your God. So whether we in the big old school or the ion room or with God the Bible the room up there, praise the name of the Lord. You want to be faithful to the God of all of us. Then we're going to go to two passages of scripture in the Old Testament that's the same story from two different perspectives. Second Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 through 12. And First Chronicles chapter 11, verses 12 through 14. Now, two Old Testament passages are the exact same story from two different perspectives. All right, it's the same story from two different perspectives. Thank you. So I got that thing in here. Otherwise, you can check it out. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 to 12, uh, uh, verses 11 through 12, and then 1 Chronicles chapter 11, 12 through 14. It's the exact same story from two different perspectives. And then we're going to wrap this in so we can include the women, praise the name of the Lord, in Romans chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. All right. So, I haven't, I haven't forgotten about the women on today because it's Father's Day. Because it's Father's Day, praise the name of the Lord. Because you always want to preach a sermon that's inclusive, right? Inclusive for everybody and includes yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. But we want to start, let's start with 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 11 through 12. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Herorite. And the Philistines were gathered together in troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. Someone say beans. And the people fled from the Philistines. The Philistines, but he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord brought a great victory. Here is what the Chronicle said of the same passage of scripture. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, who was one of three mighties. He was with David at Pasadim, Pasadim, excuse me. And there the Philistines were gathered together to battle where was a parcel of ground full of barley, someone say beans, and the people fled from before the Philistines, and they set themselves in the midst of that parcel and delivered it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord saved them with a great deliverance. So we can include the women on today, Romans chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men, that includes women, unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. For the next few moments, if you allow me to get this off my chest, so you call yourself a man. So you call yourself a man. One of the 
the things that I love about today is that God in his wisdom saw that the first day of our first service should happen on June 17th, Father's Day. I'll say that again. In the, like, excuse me. In the wisdom of God, I told you I was tired. In the wisdom of God, he saw fit to start us in this new place on June 19th, which is Father's Day. Now, for many of you know, praise the name of the Lord, uh, when you look up Merriam-Webster and it talks about the definition of a father, it, it goes from a male parent or someone that can identify as having a parental role with an individual. However, it's more than just a role. It's more than just a symbol, because we call uh, elderly men fathers, whether they have children or not. But the title father, please hear me, and it's important that you understand this, men and women of God, because the true definition of a father is, a, is, is one that originates or institutes. Let me make that clear. It's one that originates or institutes. In other words, who got it started? Who under their authority was able to start something? Now, many of us will declare, and we praise God for mothers. We love mothers. My wife is a mother. My mama was a mom was a mother. We praise God for mothers. But when you look at Marion Webster, Webster will say that a mother is one, a female parent, or a person or something that is an extreme or ultimate example of its kind, it's especially in terms of scale. So we can call someone the mother of all attitudes or the mother of all storm. But, a, but just because you are the example does not mean that you are its originator. You cannot be the example if you are not the originator. Many of us need to understand and embrace that while we praise God for our mothers, life starts with fathers. Life starts with fathers. Life starts with fathers. But Brother Fred, one thing that you must understand, though, is that if you start it, you have the responsibility of maintaining it. See, this is where we fall out because those of us that would consider ourselves to be fathers, we want to start it, but we don't maintain it. It got quiet. We will start something, but we can't maintain it. So since we can't maintain it, we want the authority, we want the notoriety, we want the praise, we want the celebrity without the responsibility. I cannot honor you if you don't do what's honorable. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? And it brings frustration when you have individuals who want to be celebrated but are not doing what's necessary to receive the accolades that they mandate. I'm trying. One of the wonderful things about God that I love is that God does not do anything that he can't maintain. God does not do anything that he can't support. And the reason why, to my, all of you that are in, uh, in ministry, praise the name of the Lord, male or female, if God called you, and you know God called you, you don't have to defend your calling. You don't have to defend your anointing. All you have to be is just be obedient, and the spirit of God that called you, he will be the one that maintains what you've been called to do. So, so Tasha, you don't have to fight with anybody about what God called you to do. Because if you're faithful, God says, watch this, it's him that gives you the will and the do of his good pleasure. Even Jesus, God spoke up for Jesus. Remember when he came out of the water, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please hear ye him. And Jesus turns around in John chapter 11 and says, Father, I know that you always hear me, but so that they know that you called me, Lazarus, come forth. They know that you called me, Lazarus, come forth. And for many of you that's in the house today, and for those of you that's watching on social media, God is letting you know today what I'm about to do in your life is not necessarily for you, but so that others know that you have a relationship with me. Why? Because I am your father. My therapist just 
just jumped on. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? The reason why we go through what we go through is because God wants to use you to reach somebody else. God wants to use your marriage to reach somebody else's marriage. God wants to use your relationship with your children to reach someone else's relationship, to reach someone else's children. But what we do, First Lady, is that we get God so focused on our issue that he can't really do what God wants to do through you. I, I, and I don't understand. I don't understand because God has proven himself to us over and over. God has never failed us. God has always healed us. God has always made a way. God has always delivered. God has always set free. God has always driven out the devil. God has always slain every giant. But it seems like just because we got rid of the lion, when his brothers show up, we fall to pieces. We fall to pieces. I haven't forgotten what I'm talking about, I promise you. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, it is, this is Paul talking to the church and he gives his understanding of soteriology or salvation. And he begins to break down what justification really means. He begins to break down, praise the name of the Lord, how sin not just came into creation, but how it permeated throughout all time until Jesus shows up. He talks about, praise the name of the Lord, in the wisdom of God. God understood that if I can combine everybody's sin in Adam, and when Jesus comes, praise the name of the Lord, if I conclude every, every sin under Adam, I can include all salvation in Jesus Christ. So when Paul says, by the disobedience of one, sin came into the earth, praise the name of the Lord, by the obedience of one, salvation comes into the world. What does this have to do with fathers? Praise the name of the Lord. I'm glad that you asked, Sister Green. Come cut corners so we can get out of here. My brothers and sisters and those of you that's watching, because God has ordained and anointed you to be the father of your household, everything starts and ends with you. Hallelujah. The Bible says that how can a robber comes in and take anything out of the man's house unless he first binds the strong man. And I'm here to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, that regardless of where you may see yourself, God sees you as a strong man. And you shall continue to be a strong man as long as you don't rely on your strength, as long as you don't rely on your intelligence as long as you don't rely on your resources but you rely and put your hope and trust in God everything is going to be all right put your hands together give God some praise everything is going to be all right my brothers and sisters you need to understand something hallelujah that because we're fathers God has given us the anointing to be responsible God has given us the the anointing and the resources to be able to deal with whatever comes our way. So my brothers and sisters, as you are watching here today and every father that's watching, God's got your back. Hallelujah. God has got your back. I understand that the woman that God gave you may see things differently. They may see things clearer than you do. Praise the name of the Lord. But that's the good thing about having a woman in your life. You can't see everything, but she does not have, watch this, she does not have the anointing to fix the situation. She does not have the anointing to fix the situation. She may see the, she may hear the sound before you. She may even know what the sound is. Praise the name of the Lord. But is it not strange that when she hears the bump in the night, she does not get up. She sends you. See, she sends you. The reason why she sends you into the dark is because she knows that she's not equipped to handle whatever's in the dark. She's not equipped to handle what's on the other side. Hallelujah. She understands that God has not given me the reason, the resource to handle the giant in our land, to handle the evil that's in the dark. But she had given, but God has given me a man with broad shoulders and big arms and thick thighs, paws, hallelujah, to be able to go and do what needs to be done. Put your hands together and give God some praise. I got to get out of here. My brothers and sisters, you must understand something, that because you have been given the responsibility of leading your family, You've been given the responsibility of loving your wife and your kids. You've been given the responsibility for setting the spiritual tone. 
in your house. Hallelujah. You don't have to be like Pastor Carr or you don't have to do stuff as Pastor Carr, but the same spirit of God that's on the inside of me wants to reside on the inside of you so that when you pray, so that when you pray, the same God that works in me, the same God that, that, that holds the devil at bay in my life will be the same in your life. Hallelujah. It's not who says it, it's who's saying it through you. Who's saying it through you. Hallelujah. Thank the name of the Lord. Praise the name of, of the Lord. I got to get out of here. So the Bible says that by the disobedience of one, sin came into the world by the obedience of one. Righteousness and salvation came into the world. My brothers and sisters today, Sister Debbie McCarvey, God bless you out there in Pensacola, Florida. The Bible to lets us know through Romans, praise the name of the Lord and to every father in the house that if you commit your way to God, there shall be peace in your household. I need every father, not just in the room, but watching today. Hallelujah. That you need to declare on the inside that there shall be peace. And if it means that I got to get my hands dirty, it's going to be peace. If it means that I need to roll up my sleeves, there will be peace. Why? Because God has made me a man. I didn't call myself a man, but God made me a man. God made me the head and not the tail. He made me the leader and not the follower. And upon the solid rock I stand. I'm not standing on my size. I'm not standing on my temper. I'm not standing on my attitude. But I'm standing, hallelujah, in the truth of God that said that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I'm standing on the side of God. And if God be for me, if God be for me, he is more than the world against me. I got to get out of here, Brother Tamir. The Bible tells us in Samuel and in Chronicles that David is getting ready to die. And what David says is, hallelujah, sit down. I haven't said nothing. The Bible says that David is getting ready to get up out of here. And so he began to tell all the people that he worked with. He's telling all the people that fought under him. Hallelujah. He talked about all the people that made his name great. My brothers and sisters, as fathers, you have to be able to not just apologize, but also to celebrate. Also to celebrate. If you want your children to honor you, you've got to be able to honor your children. That's why I don't call Fred and Leroy my sons. I call them my lions. Please. Because the longer they live, my voice carries. They are the echo of my integrity. Hey, they are the echo of my integrity. Why do I say it like that, Sister Green? Because everything that I have put into them, they're going to carry it on as long after I'm gone. What you see of me today are the seeds that were planted by my father, that were planted by my father's father, and my father's father's father, whether it be good or bad, it's the seed that's planted on the inside. And my brothers and sisters, that's why it's important that you train up your child in in the way that they should go, hallelujah. That is why it is important that you train up your child in the way that he should go. And the Bible gives us a promise that when they get old, they shall not depart. In other words, it's not going to leave their consciousness. They may not do it, but it's not going to leave their consciousness. Hallelujah. It's not going to leave their consciousness. And the reason why, let me just slow down just a little bit so I can drive this point over. And the reason why we love God so is because when you commit your children to God, God watches them. When you commit your children to God, just because you've committed them to God does not mean that they're going to do everything right. Just, because, just like you and I didn't do everything right. But God still has his hands on them. Hallelujah. And Sister Marsha, can you help me testify that even though we did a lot of stuff wrong, nothing we did took us out because God knew that on June 19th, we would be in the Echo Ballroom of the Santa Fe Hotel and Casino, giving God praise. Clap your hands and give God some glory. 
Gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. So you call yourself a man. The Bible says in Samuel that there was a man by the name of Shema. And there was a hill of the battle going on with the Philistines. Praise the name of the Lord. And there got a point in time in the battle that they were that the Philistines were winning and they began to run. But Shema said, wait a minute. I'm not just fighting for myself. I'm not just fighting for my brothers, but I'm fighting for those that can't fight for themselves. I'm fighting for those that can't speak for themselves. And I've got to take a stand somewhere. And it just so happened that he did it in a field of beans. I know there is a cliche that says that what you're stressing about doesn't matter to a hill of beans. But the Bible in this aspect said that those beans represented peace in my home. Those beans represented joy in my marriage. Those beans represented peace in my finances. And Shema said, wait a minute. Enough is enough. I can imagine, praise the name of the Lord, that that's where Popeye got his situation from. Y'all know the cartoon Popeye? After Brutus and olive oil would beat Popeye up, he would say, that's enough is enough, and I can't stand no more. And he would crush his can of spinach, and the, and the cartoon would say that he began to get supernatural powers out of that can of spinach. And so I'm talking to a few fathers, not just in the room, but everyone that is under the sound of my voice, uh, that you've got to be willing uh, to fight for your beans. Uh, you've got to be willing uh, to open up your can of spinach uh, and tell the devil that God is the leader of my life. Uh, God is the leader of my home. Uh, God is the keeper of my mind. Uh, God is the guardian of my heart. Uh, hallelujah. God is going to keep me uh, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Yes, the bills are high, but the Bible says that he is Jehovah Jireh. My God shall supply every one of my needs according to his riches in glory. And even when I get sick, he is the God that heals me. And because he heals me, I can keep on swinging. Hallelujah. Because God is my battle axe. God is my strength. God is my leader. Got your hands and give God some praise. Got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. Sister Sandra Kelly, God bless you. Las Vegas is in the house. You need to understand something as I bring this to a close. To every farmer in the house today, it's not always going to look good. It's not always going to look pretty. It's not always going to look like everything the way that it should. But you need to understand something. That as long as you are willing to fight for the bees, God is going to give you a great victory. As long as you keep standing for God, if God be for you, no weapon, hallelujah, no one can stand in front of you. They may stand, but they're going to fall. Hallelujah. You need to be just like that weevil wobble. You fall with you. They bend and fall back and forth, but you don't fall down. You get back up. Get back on your face before God. Get on your knees before God and say, God, I'm standing. I'm standing on my knees. I'm standing on my faith. But I'm standing in the truth that you have made me the head and not the tail. You have made me the victor, not the victim. Devil, you had your shot, but I took it and I'm still running for Jesus. Stop glad and give God praise. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. People of God, you need to understand something, Brother Kevin. So you call yourself a man. Be a man of God. Brother David, you call yourself a man. Be a man of God. Brother Fred, you call yourself a man. Be a man of God. For those of you that's watching, you call yourself a man. Be a man of God. Let me tell you something. There is nothing more attractive than a man of God. There is nothing, Brother Demir, I forgot about you. You call yourself a man, let me tell you something. There is nothing more attractive than a man of God. Amen. The greatest aphrodisiac is not money, but a godly man. Amen.
I wouldn't tell you how I know, but we're going to keep you moving. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, men of God, let me say this to you directly. They'll catch that when they get home. <laughs> to every father that's watching, you need to understand something. You need to understand something that God has given you. Everything you need. At Freedom Lions Campbell, God bless you out there in Oakland, California. You need to understand that God has given you everything you need to be successful in your home. God has given you everything you need to have a successful marriage. All you have to do is submit your will to God. All you have to do is submit your way to the Lord. The Bible says that if we even commit our way to the Lord, he will make even our enemies be at peace. Not the people that don't like you, but the people that don't like you for real. The people that don't like you for real, for real. The, the on-site people. The on-site people. And see, the wonderful thing about God is this, is that when you stand in the confidence that God has given you, you don't have to be intimidated by anybody. You don't have to be in fear of anybody. You don't have to be daunted by anybody. They may challenge you, but the confidence that God has given you, you can celebrate them and keep on moving. Because just because you win does not mean that I lose. That just means you won. You didn't beat me, because I'm, but I'm not competing with you. Does, does that make sense? So you call yourself a man. Whether it's in Romans, obedience was the key. But in 2 Samuel and Chronicles, they had to take a stand. And it's easy for us as men, see, if I had time, you know, read that, that real sermon was three points. That was going to be one of my points. In the Old Testament, he proved himself as a man because he took a stand. Because he understood he was fighting for something greater than himself. But in the New Testament, Jesus realized that even though you take a stand, if you don't stand in obedience, you're still going to fail. Y'all catch that when you get home. If you don't stand in obedience, you're going to fail. Men of God, your wife doesn't want you to pray like some great preacher, but pray. Just pray. And at the end of the day, since I'm going to just talk to the brothers real quick, you, you know what your wife sounds like when she fuss? You know how to turn your wife's voice off as she fussing? But give God that same type of energy. Be willing to hear God just as fast as you're willing to hear somebody else. And I promise you, I promise you, everything is going to be all right. I promise you. Dr. Campbell, we praise God for you, sir. It's going to be all right. But you have to be willing to, we as fathers have to be willing to take a stand. Eventually, eventually, please just hear me, eventually, all of the suicide that's going on with our young men, somebody has to take a stand. And it can't always be the mothers. It can't always be the mothers. Someone has to put a stop to some of this crime that's going on in our neighborhood. And it can't always be the mothers. Because it's not just the mother's son that's dying. I, I didn't expect too many amens on that one. It's not just the mother's son that's dying. She is the example, but the originator, the progenitor, is us. Yes. One, of the, one of the reasons why I believe Holy Ribbon is going to be successful as a ministry is because uh, of what we did when service started. Y'all yes. didn't shout, then I started shouting. I shouted first, and y'all followed me. Because Sister, Sister Victoria is my life coach. You may be the example, but I set the tone for the service. Yeah. I set the tone for the service. I, I, set the, I set the tone for the service. And any ministry where the pastor goes in more than the people, that's going to be a successful ministry. I'll be my said, yes, sir. 
Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I know they say like priests like people, but, but or people like priests, but it should be like priests like people. In the book of Proverbs or, or Psalm, in the Psalm, we're talking about my people die for a lack of knowledge. It wasn't because it wasn't because the people didn't know, it was because the priests weren't telling them. The, the fathers, the originators, the progenitors wasn't teaching them. Let me say this to you all, I'm gonna be done. There was a place in Hawaii called the Polynesian Culture Center. And, and one of the things that I love about the Polynesian culture is this, at least historically, the men were responsible for everything. And the women reinforced what the fathers taught. Let me say that again. The men were responsible for everything. And the women or the mothers were to reinforce what was taught. It's not like that in Western culture, because in the Western culture, it's like backwards. People roll their eyes. Even in my marriage, my wife would set the rules of the house, and you know, I'd be like, okay, you know, and I would break them every now and then because I was the father and I said I was the man of the house, and then y'all paid it just like what I want to do. But that's so backwards. This is my home, and she reinforces what I lay down. Well, now you you get a little misogynist, no. That's taking care of what's yours. For those of you that own a car, how many people you let slam your doors? Everybody, they felt that one. I felt that one. But for those of you that had kids that want to use your car, how often would you get mad if they burnt out, used up all the gas, and wouldn't put anything back? You know why you felt that way? Because it was yours. And you want to take care of what is yours. And so every father that's watching, whatever God has placed under your authority, you are responsible for it. But can I tell you something? And I'm done. That even though you are responsible for it, God is going to give you the ability to take care of it. He's going to give you the ability to take care of it. He's going to give you the ability to take care of it. That is why men sacrifice. The wife looks better than the husband. The wife looks better than the husband. Because at the end of the day, what good is it you walking around Taylor Maine and she's three star happy? Does everybody understand what we're saying? I'm just leaving that there. You know, when I get older, now, I can start having that kind of stuff. The wonderful thing about being a father, the wonderful thing, something from Africa is called, the wonderful thing about being a father is this, is that you don't have to tell anybody who handles your business. They will see those that are associated with you, and they will tell you who handles your business. And if you don't believe me, ask God. Because when it came to sin, Sin was not your problem. Sin was God's problem. And God dealt with it. God dealt with it. And we are the beneficiary. We are the beneficiary. Or the benefactor. We benefit from it. It's to our advantage. And I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful to God that God can handle his business. It's not strange that we deal with God as fathers so he can show us how to be a father. She said that, not me. She said that's deep for y'all on social media. The wonderful thing about God, and we're standing. We're standing. All in this building. We're standing. Sister Sherry Green, God bless you. Sister Golden, God bless you. Out there in Virginia. We pray to God today, not just for this building, but of all days, Father's Day, we get to restart or start a new chapter. A new chapter. I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray for Father, for those that are here, 
and for those that will be, and for those that are not here. Because whether you believe it or not, the reason why many of our homes are not successful is because our fathers are out of place. One monkey doesn't stop the show. But things work better when everyone is in place. I'll say that again. Things just work better when everything is in place. And so as I get ready to pray for every father, for every father, my, my first line just jumped off. As we get ready to pray for fathers, we are not just praying for their salvation, but we're praying for clarity of mind. Clarity of mind, resolve in heart, and a rejuvenation in their spirit. We are praying today that God would turn the heart of fathers back to their families, back to their wives, back to their children. We recognize this can be rough out there, but the home is supposed to be your safe space. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this word. We thank you today for the fathers. We thank you, God, because it's on their shoulders that we stand. And now, God, in the name of Jesus, even as we pray, we pray for clarity of mind. When the enemy would come, God, to bring confusion, we speak peace in the mind. We speak peace in the mind. Regardless of what the bills say, God, we speak peace to the mind. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak peace to the heart, oh God. Whatever is causing the confusion, hallelujah, we speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. God, as always, if they don't know you in the part of their sin, if someone's watching that don't know you in the part of their sin, God, if they just declare that they are just a sinner, hallelujah, that they are a sinner, they are opening their heart to you to forgive them, oh God. We believe that you're going to save them. God, even as we pray, these fathers, God, are the strong men in their home. And they have allowed the enemy to take over, to control, to distort, to go oh God, to take, to pervert. But God, we speak a revival in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Bible break out in their homes, oh God, and reveal yourself to them as never before. Whether they are a new father, a old father, a father to be, God, we believe by faith that the same way you were faithful to me and others, you can be faithful to them. Devil, we serve you. Notice today that you are still a defeated foe. And we give God all the glory. We give God all the honor. We give God all the praise. God, even as we pray today for every mother that is going through right now, oh God, for every father that is out of order, every father that is out of place, God, the same way you look over my mother when she was in that situation. Be a, be a ram in the bush for them. Help them not compromise who they are, oh God, just to make ends meet. Help them not compromise your promise, oh God, and abort the resources that you've given them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you today for every home that's represented in this place. You know what they stand in need of, God, even before we ask. And right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we believe that you're going to pour out blessings not just on our sons and daughters, not just on the wives, oh God, not just on the aunts and uncles and grandmothers and grandfathers, but the fathers as well. You see the need, you feel the burden. But God, you also know our end from the beginning. And we glorify you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of the Lord said amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. Pastor Clark out there in Stockton, California, you may be seated. We salute you. Hallelujah. We want to thank each and every one of you today. I know y'all got some stuff for the men, so I'm about to sit down and close my mouth. But how many of you all enjoyed service today? Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Brothers and here, thank you for working with us. I know we had some stuff lined up, but we want the Lord to have his way. So we praise God for you. Amen. We're going to make you famous on social media. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, at this time, we're going we're gonna to end our live stream. And so for those of you that's watching us on, on the live stream, Facebook, praise the name of the Lord. Don't forget to meet us right back here next week at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. No one in this world loves you more than I do, but my wife and I, praise, excuse me, no one loves you in this world more, more than my wife and I do, but God, and that's barely. You guys know the hook. Govern yourselves accordingly. Come on, let's celebrate them as they leave.